Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Strategy Guide, where we show you how to get strategic victories and tactical victories in your favorite video games. Hey guys, I'm 12, we're talking here, back with part, uh, episode 5 of Strategy Guide for our Supreme Commander to UEF campaign. We did the first four, then we took a break, did skirmish mode. Somewhere in between the each campaign, I'm going to do a skirmish mode um, strategy guide for all of these. And this or I'm going to be more chopped up into multiple episodes. Because I don't like to have super long episodes. My orders are to subdue this colony and anyone protecting it. Okay, so if you haven't watched, pretty much... um. Colonel Rogers went crazy because he sole command of everything on this colony because um, they lost contact with them. And he decided to um, attack some harmless human beings known as the Illuminate who, well, they do have their own military and whatnot, but they, this colony is peaceful. They haven't done anything and they just decided for no reason to attack them. Okay, so what we need to do is not worry about our units so much as we need to worry about setting up defenses. So what I'm going to do is have you set up some ground defenses here. Now, it may not seem like we have a whole lot to start out with, but you don't start out with a uh, land gantry and whatnot. And when you try to make a big push forward, this land gantry will become very useful later on. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to see what we have available. Land, okay, we have land gantry available. Okay, we already have a uh, radar thing. So, what we're going to do is increase our structure training time and increase our research. Now, the main reason why we want to do this at first is because we want to have, um, be able to set up multiple defenses and not have to worry about so much as the cost is we don't start out with a whole lot of um, mass extractors and energy generators and so forth. So what I've done now is <clears throat> I have set this air factory to constantly make um, wasps. We will constantly be raided by air, which is why you should definitely have a lot of AA. Now, places where your ground units can go, like enemy ground units can go up this ramp, you can put land land unit, you can put land turrets down here or heavy point defenses here. Now, the strategic thinking of mine says that air defenses are here because they can pretty much fly anywhere above us. So what that means is that you're also going to need to put ground air units Heavy point AA defenses with your ground units because your ground units can be attacked by both air and ground. Whereas if you put your ground units so that they protect you in a way to where they will not be able to reach your air units, you will not have to put ground ground turrets with your air turrets, and you'll only need to put air turrets by themselves or air turrets with ground units as well to prevent them from being blown up, shot, and whatnot. Now, as we remember, um, it makes an area... Shield generators will make an area where a shield will uh, pop up. Anything within the shield is protected by anything outside. Anything with inside the shield area is not uh, will not be deflected by the shield as it's with inside the shield itself and will shoot and still harm things. So what you need to do is do not set your shield right next to it, but more or less set it a little bit back so that the shield um, border is right in front of it. That way, they have to be right next to the turret in order to shoot it instead of being able to be like, I don't know, say like right here and still be able to shoot it because it's with inside the shield itself. Now, another thing that I haven't done yet, which I'm going to... 
take all of my ground units and maneuver them here. Now, the reason for this is that you only have two engineers, and you don't want to put your um, ACU in harm's way, but I guess I'm going to have to set up a, a turret there, and then I'm going to have this make two more engineers. But you don't want to go focus on factory making and whatnot first, as you'll definitely be overrun by that. Maybe just set up, focus on one thing. Like, I have, like, 12, I have, like, about 12 here. Some of them are already on patrol. Use your engineers to build defensive shields to protect your ACU and structures. He's right, but I need, like, four more, um, research points for this. Okay. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make ground point defenses here. And what we're gonna do is you can't quite see past this line here that I can't get past. We have to constantly defend until we can protect ourselves. Like, in a much better fashion. Like, get everything online kind of deal. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm definitely making a lot of heavy point defenses. But I'm also putting them close together because it makes it harder for units to just drive by. If they want to drive by and walk past these things they're, or get past my line, they're going to actually have to destroy them because some units can just drive past it. Intact, their main target, which would probably be my factories and whatnot, or my ACU. So you want to do that so you can do that. So now what I'm going to do seeing as I was a little bit late to the party getting this one done, which you sort of are when you have this, like, much of a wide area to defend. But you definitely have to block middle lane because they definitely push up a lot here. But you also have to refuse the right and left flank. And refusing means you refuse to let them open up a lane to attack you, which means if they're going that way, you make sure you defend the flank from an attack, which is another way of saying that you refuse to let that happen, or what is known as refusing the flank. So now I'm going to put this back here. Maybe that's a bit too close, but you definitely don't want it right next to it, as well as we learned how effective these shields can be. I'm going to put this one a little bit back further, and that one sh should hopefully seal the deal. And I want to see how this one does. <clears throat> now, another thing I didn't go for straight away is the attachments, as they're not really that necess much necessary. As you guys can see, I have a lot of fighters here. Now, another thing you're going to need to do is that I mainly focus usually ground and air, or air and, or like, air and naval forces and whatnot. For this one, you're definitely going to go ground and air. Definitely ground and air. And what you're going to do is you are going to try... Wow, that's almost perfect. Holy crap. And what you're going to try and do is push up one flank and weaken them when, when, when we have the chance to go on the offensive, which will be not long from now. So, <clears throat> shield's gonna go back I here. There some bodies to get here. Yours doesn't have to be one of them. And then we're gonna set up an AA emplacement. We're gonna set up two AA emplacements per AA lane because we don't want our ground units to get beaten up because our heavy point defenses are defenses against air units and whatnot and all that stuff. So you definitely have to be aware of that because an enemy, especially people on online multiplayer, will definitely take advantage of that and annihilate you with that. People tried to do that with me, but I caught on very quickly and I sort of corrected my mistake, but trust me. If you don't catch on fast enough, someone definitely will make use of that to their advantage. Okay. 
So what I'm gonna try and do now is take some of the pressure off of my um, defenses. But I also want to defend my air units. My AA towers. Or emplacements, or whatever you want to call them. So what I'm going to do is... Make a shield here. For them. I have my ACU somewhere. I definitely don't want to leave it on a flank because it's more open to an attack. And I'm definitely going to leave one here as well. Okay. Now I'm going to set up another AA turret there, of course. Over here, I think we'll need one more. I'm on this side, I think we're good. Because we got a lot of AA covering this place. Okay. So I'm going to group all these up here. Now, I don't have that much in terms of structures, but we'll, you'll definitely get a lot more later on. Like mass converters, short range and long range artillery. As I mentioned in the skirmish mode, those are pretty handy if you are UEF because you can definitely make use of a lot of those. Now what I'm going to have these ones do is mainly focus on building more resource gathering stuff. Although, if you look at a global view, we have four mass extractors already in place. Maybe a little bit more than that. What we need now is more research. But in a situation like this, focusing on like um, research and stuff first isn't going to cut it. Because eventually you... It will mean that you'll get units faster. Well, better upgrades for your units faster. But it also means... <clears throat> that you will get... That you will get less resources available to spend on um, units and structures to defend your base and other areas as well. So what I'm going to have this one do is I'm going to have this one make... Make <clears throat> another energy generator. Then I'm going to disable this pump build and the repeat build of bombers. Now what I want them to do is I want them to make as many bombers as possible. Now we don't have that many research things available. So we're probably not going to make that much research stations because we don't have the whole thing unlocked. Although we do for air, naval, and um, and ground. Apparently we already have unlocked fat boys. So before we go on the offensive, I'm going to take the time and upgrade all of our units as needed. <clears throat> so next will come the preparation phase, which we will be about to be entering, where we will need to prep for our assault and whatnot that we will do later on. So I think... Building four more research stations is about good enough. Maybe more if you want to feel like you want to rush things a bit. Although, you shouldn't rush everything. Now it's time to be the aggressor. I still have one more card to play. This is a city full of innocent families. Imagine what you'd feel like if... I have my orders. Strategic launch detected. They're nuking. No. They're gonna play cheap and use nukes. What have you done? Okay. Lynch has two ICBM launch facilities. You take those out, the nukes stop. ICBMs are short for Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, or as, or as I refer to them as Strategic Launch, Strategic Launchers, because they say Strategic Launch Detected whenever you launch something like this. Okay, now we're going to need more Air Force 
more than we are going to need ground forces, but we still are going to need ground forces. So I'm going to tell my ground forces to move here. They're going to meet up with these guys and the ones over here. And we're going to push right and go forward. But you'll see that in the next video where I actually go on the offensive and show you what we do next. Also, with a little mixture of um, prep phase and about what you, how, many, how many of each unit you will need. And if you guys enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to leave any comments, questions, or feedback for me in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget, in the, in the description will be the link to my playlist of every strategy guide video that I've done. If you are interested in seeing, um, if you are interested in seeing um guides to getting um victories in other strategic games such as Risk Factions, Warlords Two, Rise of Demons, <clears throat> and maybe a few others. Anyway, guys.